Once we have our sitemap set up, SEO Checklist wants us to get a Google account and a Microsoft account, primarily so we can start using some of their services and submit our sitemap to those websites. It has links for the location to do all of these things. So we would start with get a Google account. If you don't already have one, it's got a link right here. I'll open this in a new tab, create your Google account. And of course you would just fill in all of this information and go through the process and sign up for a Google account. Most of you probably already have one. If you have an email address with Google or anything like that, then that is your account. Then you need to verify your site ownership with Google's search console. In other words, you have to take any number of steps. You can, there are a couple of different ways to do this to confirm with Google that the website you're saying is yours actually does belong to you. To do this, once again, we have a link, Google Search Console. I'll open this in a new tab. And this is where you would add your website. Now, obviously, this would have to be a website that's live in production, not just your development site. So you might have to do this afterward. But for instance, we can type in the URL for our website or our domain essentially and click add property. And then it's going to give us a couple of options on how to actually confirm that this belongs to us. If you're using Google analytics under the same account that you're trying to register your site with, then Google can just use that to say, okay, yeah, this site does belong to you and you can verify very easily. If you're not doing that, or if you would for some reason just prefer to do it another way, we have alternate methods here and a couple different options. Typically a very easy one. And the one that I usually go with, if I can't do it the other way is the HTML file upload. This will simply give you a file to download and it's got some random text in it. And then you take that file, you upload it to the root directory of your website. And then you go through a couple steps and tell Google when you're done doing that. And then it will check to see if that HTML file is there. And if it does, then that knows that it's your website because no one else would have been able to upload that file to your site besides the owner. And then it will be able to tell that that site is yours and you can start using the search console. I'm going to go ahead and verify this site of mine so we can take a look at what the search console is exactly. And you can see that right off the bat, I have zero total clicks on my website for just the past few days because it's, it's a very low key website and I don't do a whole lot to promote it. It's just sort of there. That's all right. But you can also do things like analyze your search traffic. I'm not going to dig into every one of these, but it'll show you where links to your site are coming from and what keywords people are using to reach your site. Then you can also, one very helpful thing is under crawl. If you click crawl errors, it will tell you of any errors that Google encountered when it was crawling your website. These errors are going to hurt your search engine optimization if you have any. The more errors Google finds, the more sort of demerits those are against your page rank. So you can use this to see what errors it may have found and you can do things to try to fix those to help your search engine optimization. Once we've done all this, we want to submit our XML sitemap to Google. Now, there's a good chance in almost all cases, once your site is live, that Google will eventually find your sitemap on its own. And it probably won't take very long, but we're being proactive here by giving Google our sitemap right off the bat and saying, Hey, here's everything you need to know. Here are the pages on my website. Again, you just click this link here and you'll click add sitemap and then follow the instructions and Google will handle it from there. Then we do the essentially the same thing with Microsoft. We need to get a Microsoft account. If you don't have one, you just click this link. You'll see a page that looks like this and you can click sign in. And if you have no account, just create one. And then we're not going to go through all of the steps once again, but then you're going to authenticate your site with Bing very similarly to how we verified with Google search console. Then we're going to submit our XML sitemap to Bing again, very similar to how we submitted our XML sitemap to Google. And once we've done these things, we'll go ahead and check them off and click save. And then, the last step under search engines is to add our XML sitemap to the robots.txt file. Now we're not going to get deep into the robots.txt file, but in general, it's a pretty simple concept. 
In this file, you have a list of pages on your website, and you can tell search engines or, or any type of app that's crawling the web to ignore certain pages on your site or specifically to look at various pages on your site. And there's a special line that we can put in this file to tell search engines exactly where our sitemap is. Now, usually they are going to be looking at it in the appropriate place, sitemap.xml. But again, we're going to be proactive about this to help our search engine optimization as much as possible and tell them explicitly where the sitemap is. To do this, we need to first find and open our robots.txt file. The robots.txt file is in the root directory of your website. You'll see it right here. So what you're going to do is find this file, again, in the root directory of your site, and go ahead and open it in whatever type of coding or text editor you like to use. Just make sure you're not using something like Microsoft Word. That's going to get your formatting all weird. So here I have this open. And you can, if you're not familiar with robots.txt, you can kind of get a good idea of what's going on just by looking at it. It's showing search engines, hey, check out this, check out this, check out this. And then it asks search engines, hey, please ignore these pages, core slash anything, uh, node slash add slash anything. These aren't really pages that we want to show up in search results. Uh, I should note that search engines don't have to ignore these pages. Most of them will, but some of them are going to say, I don't really care what you want me to see. I'm going to look at everything regardless. So just keep that in mind. This isn't barring search engines from these pages. It's just saying, hey, there's nothing to see here. If you will, just ignore them. What you're going to do is go to the very bottom of this file. And you're going to put a new line, sitemap, colon, and then the full URL to your sitemap. So HTTP, colon, backslash, backslash. And then you're going to have your domain here. So it might be, you know, whatever your domain is, slash, sitemap.xml. Make sure you save. And now, search engines will look to this location for your sitemap. Obviously, you want to use your real domain. And then once you've saved this, you can go back to your website and go to your domain slash robots.txt and it'll pull up the raw text file right here. And you can scroll to the bottom to make sure that line is actually there. If not, that either means you didn't save it or maybe you saved it but you uploaded it to the wrong place or you got it from the wrong place to begin with or something like that but it should look like this after you've saved it and uploaded it back to your site. And of course, once that's done, we'll want to check that off and click Save. And now we've satisfied all these items under the Search Engines tab. In general, what we have now are some extra tools to help analyze the traffic to our site. And we've taken a few steps to really proactively let all of the search engines know what all of the pages are on our website.